Hello, this is Dora Tarver from createandmanageschedules.com and in this video tutorial we're going to go over how to set up your project schedule. Now, setting up the project schedule is very important. When you open Project 2010, um, by default, when you open a schedule, it will fill in the task name, duration column, start, finish, predecessor, and resource columns. Um, and there is no default text formatting or anything else in here. Now, typically, when you're creating a project schedule, you will um, have the percent complete that you'll want to manage. And um, also, when you're just setting up the schedule, you probably won't need to look at the Gantt chart. So what I typically do is click on this uh, divider and drag it over to the right-hand side to get rid of that so that I can see more on my screen. And then what I'll do is I'll right-click on a title bar and insert the percent complete column and um, besides inserting the percent complete that's the only column actually if I'm working on a project that's tracking work hours I'll also insert the work hours so when you right click and s and see this uh, drop down list of columns to insert if you hit the letter W it'll scroll to the W section and uh, select work okay now the other thing that I uh, recommend doing is formatting the text styles on your project schedule so that you have the standard formats. If you go to the format tab up here in the ribbon and uh, look to the far left you'll see text styles and if you click on that um, on this dialog box you'll see item to change and what we're going to do is we're going to format the milestone tasks uh, by default the text color is black but what we'd like to do is use the industry standard of blue for the milestones so they'll appear blue and the other uh, change we'll make is for critical tasks um, I like to also use the industry standard of red to display it critical tasks. Okay, Now, as you see, items to change allows you to change many different things here. Um, and there are, there are a variety of font faces and sizes, but those are the changes I make. I literally just change the font color. Now, when you're building your schedule, um, I recommend using a standard naming convention and setting up a template that you can then build future plans off of. So the first thing you'll want to do is um, create a row for your project name. Now this is just going to be um, a template so I'll just put project name and um, typically that project will have will begin uh, at a certain time and end at a certain time so you'll want to have a uh, milestone so let's say my project was um, I don't know a um, back office trading system. So whatever that trading system name is, I might call that project name that name. And then I'll say start that name. Um, and as a milestone, the duration would be set to zero. And because I formatted the text styles for milestones to be zero, it automatically changes this to zero. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to indent this task, this milestone, uh, by right clicking and selecting from the mini tool bar the indent and I know that um, I will have a uh, completion milestone so I just copied the first milestone and pasted it below and I'm just gonna put uh, complete so that's the name of this task by the way if you put your cursor between columns and double click project automatically resizes the width of the cell. Okay, So we have a project, we know it's going to start, we know it's going to finish, and basically the information in between um, are the tasks and summary tasks that you add in your project plan. Um, if you highlight a cell and click in the lower uh, right hand corner, you can drag down to copy the contents and um, you can start building your project plan. Um, now, in Project 2010, you can start filling out details in terms of what task names are, and 
project does not automatically fill in the start date or finish date or even the duration. It leaves that empty. So if I go ahead and save this, I'm calling this setup1, click save, and I have saved this. Now, um, by default, when you create a project plan in Project 2010, the tasks are set to, by default, to be manually scheduled. And what that means is you type in whatever date you want for these tasks, and project does not automatically put the dates in. However, um, if you want your project schedule to automatically calculate the duration and the work and the start and the finish, etc., all you have to do is, there are a couple ways to do this. One is you can select the actual rows and then click on Auto Schedule and it just automatically throws in a date. Now in this case, um, I don't have predecessors set up. The predecessors are how we link tasks to each other. So for example, if this task here, uh, let's call this Add Tasks 1, and this one we'll call Add Tasks 2, Okay, now let's say add task 2 cannot start until add task 1 is complete. In that case, the predecessor would be the row ID number 3, because that's where task 1 is located. So over here in the predecessor column, I'll just type the number 3. Now because task 2, which is in row 4, is now linked to the predecessor of task 3, then task 3, which is right here, ends on the 15th, and then task 4 begins on the 16th. These are linked now. And the same for task 3. Let's say, um, I mean task number 1 here in row 3. Let's say this task here is dependent on the project beginning before it can start, which makes sense. So that means I would put the predecessor ID number 2 in this field. Number 2 is linked to the start milestone and it automatically recalculates both of these dates because these are set to automatically recalculate or automatically schedule. Okay, um, And the project completion, um, let's say the project is very short, has two tasks, it's done when when task two is complete, so that means for the predecessor I'll put in number four. Now um, if you don't want to manually go back and forth and change uh, between auto schedule and manual schedule, which by the way you can once you've changed something to auto schedule, go back and make it manually scheduled, and then go ahead and change things physically without it recalculating. Or what you can do is if you go to the backstage area by clicking on the file tab and select options and go to the project options schedule page, you'll see down here in the toward the middle that there is a scheduling option for this project called new tasks created. And by default, it's set to manually scheduled, and we can change that to auto scheduled. And if you do that and click on OK, then when you insert any new tasks and start typing, let's call this task 3, it automatically fills in the information for you. Um, okay, so notice that these tasks are appearing red. That's because we formatted the text styles to be read for tasks that are on the critical path. And what that means, of course, is anything that um, is on the critical path is a task that, if it slips, then the project end date will slip. So let's say this, uh, you know, task one is going to be two days, and this is going to be three days, and this is going to be one day. Um, the project end date right now is the 22nd. So uh, let me just put this on auto schedule. There we go. Is the 23rd, okay? Um, and there's no slack. There's no room for slippage. Meaning, if this task does not end on the 22nd, then the project will move out. So all these tasks are on the are on the critical path, and that's why they appear red. Now, if we had some slack, let's say um, we know we plan our schedule our project to end on the 18th of the month. Oops, I'm sorry, uh, on the uh, 31st, okay? Now because I changed that to the 31st, I'm going to hit save. Um, the These tasks are no longer on the critical path. Uh, they have slack, and you can actually see that when you format your Gantt 
bars to show it. In, in this case, um, right now we're just seeing the relationship between tasks. But another detail that I like to do when I'm setting up a project schedule is format the Gantt bars over here to be able to represent um, showing Slack and critical tasks as well. And how you do that is the following. In Project 2010, if you go to the Format tab, uh, you'll notice that there is a, um, under the Bar Styles, you'll see a Critical Tasks checkbox. And if you click on that, it will show your critical tasks in red. If you select Slack, then you'll see the Slack bar. And when you roll over it, um, it'll display Slack, like it just did there a minute ago. And uh, if you want to see late tasks, you can also display that. There's an option here to format the bar styles, which if you wanted to change the default look, the default appearance is here. These are the default colors. You can change the shapes and the colors of what you see in the Gantt chart from the bar styles. Um, and the same for slippage. Um, there's the slippage uh, button here that shows uh, a line that represents how tasks have slipped in the project compared to the baseline. Now, we don't have a baseline in this schedule yet, but if we added one, you would be able to see that. There's also um, a bar style for baseline. Um, these are the various baselines that you can set. And again, if we go back to format and click bar styles, and if we scroll down, you can see these are the various uh, bar styles that are currently set. And if you wanted to add a new one, you simply, well, there are different ways to do it. You can actually insert a row at any point. You can cut a row. Let's say we just insert a row, make it easier. Um, we can call it, I don't know, whatever you want to call your row. And you can make the appearance whatever style you want from the section below. And you can make your row apply to specific existing rows that already exist in the project schedule. Actually, it's best to, to type the names up here once you know what they are. Let's say normal and summary and active. Okay, And then I can apply that, and that will appear here. Um, so we can always customize the uh, Gantt chart section, and uh, we can also change the timeline. By default, you'll see the timeline has months and days of the week. Um, you can change that by right-clicking on the timeline, going to Time Scale. And in the Time Scale dialog box, you'll notice that uh, right now we're showing two tiers, which means these two rows here. Um, we're showing weeks and we're showing days. But let's say you wanted to show maybe three tiers and you wanted the first tier to be, uh, I don't know, quarters and the middle tier to be months and the bottom tier to be weeks. Now as I'm selecting this, it actually shows us how our dates are, uh, how our timeline is adjusting, which is how we'll see it over here. Um, you can also change the label so if you didn't want to have the uh, month and day display and instead you want to see something different, you can select from this list of types of labels. Um, and um, you can also change the width and, and uh, size of these by changing the percent, uh, complete the percent size or the count. These are just how things are laid out here. Um, and you can add in a separator or not. You can see the difference as I check that on or off. You can use the fiscal year or not. Um, and for non-working time, by default in the schedule, you'll see it's grayed out. There's this color right here. You can change that to something different. If you wanted your schedule to show something different, you have a pattern for non-working time. You can say that the formats are behind the taskbars or in front of the taskbars or not even to draw them. Um, and you can apply this to the standard ca calendar or to a specific calendar that you create. And when you're ready, you simply click on OK.
because I selected blue, those appear blue. Okay, so this is how you format your your Gantt chart. And if you want to, when you're first setting up your schedule, it's best to go ahead and take care of these things up front, particularly if you're creating a template that you're going to use over and over. Um, and then once it's set up, you will be ready to dive into creating your project schedule. Now, um, some other quick details I want to show you. On the backstage, when we go to options, um, this project options starts up. And you can see here that there are some default um, details that you may want to adjust. So for example, um, in the start and finish column, you'll have the day and the month and the day um, and the year displayed, which is basically a format that you see here, a date format. You can change that to another style, whichever you prefer. You can change uh, the username who's working on this um, as well. Um, typically for display, I don't change this, but let's say you're working in another country or creating a schedule for someone in another country. Let's say, um, you know, they're in Hong Kong and you're working with Hong Kong dollars. So, um, you know, you can change that to a different currency by default in your project schedule. Or if, let's say you're in India and you're working with rupees, um, you can do the same. Uh, I believe IDR is Indian Rupees. Yep. Okay. So um, you can change th the default settings for how things look in the project options. The schedule we looked at briefly before by uh, modifying the um, the uh, manually scheduled and auto scheduled. Right now we have it set to auto scheduled. Um, there are other details in the schedule tab that you might want to look at. So for example, if your work week starts on a Sunday or if it starts on a Monday or Tuesday, whatever, you can change when your work week starts here. You can also change the default start time for your project. Um, let's say your work day is, uh, you know, 9 to 4. Okay, you can set that. And let's say you have a 7 hour work day and it's a 35 hour work week, 32 hour work week. Okay, you can set those details here, and that will apply throughout your entire schedule. Um, those are some of the common features that people typically change. Um, you can, in Project 2010, set alerts for when you have task schedule warnings, or if you want to see task schedule suggestions. Um, there are other defaults that you can change here, like calculate the project after each edit. Right now that is set on to on, part of helping you with the automatic uh, scheduling features. Um, and you also have um, calculation options for this project um, or for all projects. You can set that for all projects as well. So right now everything we're doing is for this one MPP file, but we could actually set things for every MPP file that we create just from this one um, option dialog box. In terms of proofing, um, you know, you can set defaults in terms of your dictionary, um, when you want to be flagged or what you want to ignore. There are autocorrect options that you can define as well as um, review. So, for example, if I typed about with two Bs and, I w and it's actually uh, spelled with one B, it would automatically replace that. Um, the saving options, you know, you can set a, a default location for where you want your project file saved. One of the things I typically do is I'll turn autosave on, have it save every so often. Um, better to be safe than sorry. Um, for language, the default here is English. Uh, you can add other languages on the advanced tab. Um, you can see that they, there's uh, auto filters are set for new projects. Um, I find filtering handy. We're going to actually go into that. I'll show you a level uh, soon. We have undos um, in project uh, 2010. You can have quite a few undo levels, which is very helpful. Um, and you can change this. I believe it goes up to 99. And um, for the planning wizard, which we will also go through, um, we have it selected where it gives us advice and information. 
Um, again, all these advanced options, we're only applying them to the current project schedule, but you could set them for all project schedules. Uh, I'm not changing anything else on here, but there are other options that you might want to change um, in terms of the number of recent documents that you might want to see when you go to File Recent Documents. This right now is set to 17. Um, display options for this project. You know, if you want to see work weeks, months, years, etc., um, you can choose how you want to see that. If it's just a Y or, or a YR or year spelled out. Um, so there are a number of items here that you can actually review to decide if you want to format your schedule differently. Um, on the customized ribbon, uh, this customized ribbon uh, dialog box actually appears when you right click on the ribbon to build a new one. You can create new tabs, new groups, etc. And the same for the quick access toolbar, which is the toolbar in the top left hand corner. You can define what you want in the quick access to help you navigate in your project schedule. Add-ons, uh, if you had any add-ins in this, you would see them listed here. And the Trust Center um, helps keep documents safe on your computer. By default, um, Microsoft has some certain settings and it's recommended you don't change these, but um, one of them is it disables all macros with notification. Uh, you can change that uh, to whatever you prefer to have. So that's project options. There's really not a lot that I recommend you changing, but just as I mentioned before, the date format. Sometimes you'll you'll notice that if you have date, if you have the time and the date, you'll be able to more carefully manage the details of your tasks. Um, you can change the uh, currency that you see, and uh, you can set up your project schedule to be automatically calculated or manually calculated. So we have it set to automatically scheduled right now. Um, so take a look at those details. And um, one other detail I want to show you. Um, when you're setting up your schedule, um, you know, again, it's important to have predecessors because if you're using your project schedule to be able to tell you if you're going to meet your planned completion date, um, then you need to link your project, your tasks, so that uh, everything recalculates properly. Project has a few ways in which you can do that. One is you can just literally type in the row number as I did. Um, another is if you double click on a row and open up the task information dialog box, um, you can go to the predecessors tab and you can assign predecessors and you can define not only that the predecessor exists, but what type of predecessor it is. In other words, the predecessors that we have defined down here are all finished to start, meaning when this finishes, the other one will start. But let's say you have predecessors that start at the same time, or finish at the same time, or have a start to finish relationship. You can define that here in the task information dialog box. If you wanted to add a lag of minus or plus days to a task, you can do that as well. Um, if I add a lag of, let's say, four days to this task, what it's going to do is push it out four days, click on OK, you can see it moved it out four days. Um, likewise, if I wanted to uh, move it in, let's say I come here and type minus four and click on OK. It's going to tell me you move the task to start on this date. This is before the project start date. We're going to let it continue because this is just to illustrate the functionality. But basically, uh, what I just did was move this task back four days by putting in a minus lag. Okay, So on the task information predecessors column, we have that control. Okay. Also, on the task information, um, you can decide if you want to display a task bar. What you see here is a uh, display on timeline. And for this particular task, if I want to see it on the timeline, if I click here and then click on OK, that task will appear on the timeline. And it can be handy to, at a glance, be able to see uh, where specific important phases or milestones are within your project when you add them to the timeline. So that's a new feature within 2010. 
Um, you can, of course, control your, your resources here, put them in, assign uh, how, how often they're working. Uh, you can also do that from your project schedule. Let's say I was have a resource, I'm going to type in uh, Said and Jane and Brenda. Oops. Okay. Um, now, if I double click on this, I have opened up, I see the current resource. Let's say I want to assign two resources to this task Brenda and Said. Let's say they're both working uh, part time, half 50%. Okay, and um, so we can assign the allocation of the resources. Um, on the advanced tab, um, let's say a specific task is going to start as soon as possible, but you can also define other constraints for that task. Uh, you can change the calendar. Uh, right now it's set to, when it's none, it's the standard calendar. Um, you can change your task type here from being fixed units to fixed duration or fixed work. Um, you can also add notes. One of the nice things about project that still remains in 2010 is you can insert other documents into your project file if you need to keep them there. Um, so let's say I'm, I'm inserting a uh, Word document. Let me go browse for a file. Okay, and I click on OK. If I want to display it as an icon and if I want to link it to that file, I will click on OK. And now that Word document that I just linked to will appear in the notes for this particular task. And there. Once it's added, I can add other notes. I can format them, um, changing the font face and color, etc. And um, when I click on OK, when I go back, I can notice in the um, in the indicators column here that there is a note and if I double click on that it brings me to the notes section here's the document I inserted if I want to double click on this document it will launch Word and we'll have access to that document okay let's say I, I add a custom field let me just go ahead and do one so you see what that's like um, basically from the format toolbar go to columns select custom fields and uh, let's make this a uh, cost field for some reason and let's rename it we're going to call it uh, task one cost call it whatever you want and click on OK Okay. now when I go back into the task information uh, for that task when I go to custom fields I'll see the custom field name and I called it cost we assigned rupees as the monetary measure for this particular project schedule so it appears in rupees okay so that functionality is all available in the task information so setting up your project schedule is really pretty straightforward um, you want to format the textiles you'll want to insert columns that are not necessarily visible right away um, and you can uh, you know set your Gantt chart to look a certain way depending on how you prefer to see it and your timeline as well. Um, setting up a project schedule is definitely a very important step. Once you have it organized, then you're good to go. And um, if you have any further questions about setting up your project schedule, there's actually a lot more detail that we can get into, but these are the basic steps that will help you get started. If you have any additional questions, feel free to open a help ticket at INeedSupportPlease.com and because you're a member of this program, you will get immediate support. Thank you for your time and have an excellent day.